In this tutorial, I'm going to show you how you can put your 3D objects in front of your UIs and also how to generate those cool patterns that you can use for your like game shops and things like that. Uh, if that's what you're looking for, stick around. Let's do it. All right, so here I am with an empty scene. I do have a couple of things going on because this is a project that um, will eventually be on the market. So I do have a couple of things already going. But I've gone over to a a uh, brand new scene just to demonstrate what we're doing today. So first thing is how to get your 3D objects in front of your UI. This is a two for one video. <laughs> So we'll start off by just creating our UI and I'm going to create a, uh, I think I'll create a scroll view because that's usually, um, this is usually what uh, you would use in maybe a game shop or something like that. So I'm just gonna go 2D mode with this and you can see as I zoom now, it's just the full width of the screen. Um, you know what I'll do? I'll go iPhone portrait, just like that. And then I'll just go ahead and put this exact center of the screen like that. And I might just make it bigger. Let me put this on the side here. So I can kind of see how it looks. Make it bigger. Boom. Boom. So you might want some 3D objects to be in front of this as you're scrolling through. Perhaps you're making like a shop or something. So I'm going to show you how that's done. First of all, because I'm OCD and you know, I like things looking nice, I'm going to get rid of the scroll bars, both scroll bars, and just have the scroll view at it as it is. So here is our scroll view. Now I'm in 2D mode. I'll switch over back to 3D mode. And you can see um, the camera and the scroll view. The scroll view is actually behind. <laughs> But it's 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 an overlay okay the ui is an overlay so if i had a 3d object in my scene which i'm just going to create here and put it right here right here i had a 3d object in my scene what's happening is it's actually behind the ui the ui is the main overlay so if i make this ui just completely black opacity full so you cannot see my um, my spheres that I just created between the UI and the camera. So to fix this, guys, all you gotta do is simply change the canvas settings from uh, screen space overlay. You don't want it to overlay. You can either do a screen space camera. And then just make sure your camera is attached to this and voila you have your ui in front of your camera and even if you would take your sphere and add it into the content of your scroll view it will now be a part of that um scroll view so as i scroll <laughs> it's kind of sticky but as i scroll up and down uh, you can see it's it, the scroll view works okay so there you go you're ready to create your shop and i'm going to show you how i'm going to drag it back out i'm going to show you how we can create a nice little script that will generate your products in here for you um in my case uh this script will be handy for when I import my products dynamically, maybe through a JSON um, script from a server somewhere so I can edit my products without actually going into my game. Um, if you want to see that, definitely leave a comment in the video and we'll get into that. But this will just be a very simple one. What I'm going to do is create a script now for that functionality. So my, <clears throat> I'm going to call it product generator <laughs> so my products generator and i'm gonna put it on my scroll view itself all right so next we're gonna open up the script and create a nice uh nice way here that we can customize the way that these 
uh, these objects are going to spawn in and you know how many rows how many columns and so on and so on all right <clears throat> first thing let's create a public uh, transform and this public transform is going to be our container right so this is the container where these objects are going to go into after we spawn them next let's create a public um, I can't type today I'm gonna create a public uh, transforming it why not and this transform is going to be the object themselves that I'm going to spawn since I just have a couple of spheres right now I'm just gonna call it ball those are what I'm gonna spawn into that object and then uh, if you want you can skip this part and, and create a actual 3d reference of where to start your row and column but I'm just gonna create a transform for this and use a empty game object to kind of like you know position stuff so I'm just gonna call this start post uh, finally we need now a way to make this nice and customizable we'll create a public integer and we can call we can call this um, our uh, number of rows okay and then we can create um, also um, objects per row and then finally we can create a public um, I like to do float so we can really narrow it down um, spacing okay spacing so with that we are good we're done uh, with that part at least I'm gonna get rid of the update because we don't need the update but I will now create a for loop so I'll say for and let's just say int row okay equals zero so we're gonna start at the very oh okay very beginning here and so while the row is let's <coughs> wow <laughs> wow what was that so while the row is less than the number of rows we're going to continue to increment this row that's how we do it big boy style all right um within here we're gonna have a nested um, for loop so we're gonna say for um and let's just call this column col call and again initialize it at zero and while the column right it's less than the objects per row you guessed it we're just going to increment these columns <coughs> as well now inside this for loop uh, we'll just simply create a position vector 3 and I'll just call it uh, start just call it start in post and remember I was saying that you could use numbers but I did go ahead and just create I'm gonna use a gate as uh, I'm gonna use an empty game object for this but you could have just you know have a specific coordinates of where you want stuff to start so new vector 3 inside here the X position will be where this is at so where my empty game object will be um, dot position and then dot X and then I want to add the column at this point and then the space in is where this comes in times space in that is our X our Y will also be our start not start and post but our start post is two different variables here dot position dot Y and you're gonna do the same thing but in reverse now you're going you know down so I'm starting at the top very top corner that's where I'm gonna put my empty game object and tell it to spawn right there so everything is to go across and then down um, so I'll be minus in the row at this point and then of course times uh, the space in oops time uh, space in 
And then, as for the uh, Z coordinates, I will just um, just you know just use this position dot position dot Z. So nothing fancy with that. Um, now that I have created this new position in space, this three dimensional position, all I gotta do now is say, um, well, I'll say transform because my the ball that I'm spawning in is a transform. If you had a game object, then you also say game object here. But I just call this underscore ball, and then I'm going to say is, and then instantiate this, instant the eight, and then what? Well, mine is going to just be this ball. Um, where? Of course, we already created that. It's the starting post. And then finally, uh, we never really care too much about the rotation, so you can do quaternion. Or um, if not quaternion, then you'll do the starting pose dot uh, rotation. But in this case, I'll do quaternion dot identity. And uh, open and close parentheses or parentheses with semicolon, and that is done. Now the reason I, I stored this into an underscore ball is so that we can also say underscore ball and then set um, parent, and then we'll set the parent to the container. Just like that. With that guys, we are done. I'll hit control S to save, and let's head back to Unity. And we'll finish set this up so you can see how it work in real life or well not in real life but how it works in the code okay um so i have this on my scroll view i don't have this on my scroll view so i'm gonna go ahead and just put the script boom my products generator script on the scroll view the container is the content so I just put it there because that's where stuff has to be to actually be inside your um, scroll view so the ball I'm just going to create a prefab out of this boom and I have a ball <laughs> don't I have like an image I can put on it let's give it a different I want to give it a different image eh, it's fine it's fine um, the ball I just create a prefab out of it and I'll actually delete it from the scene and then head back here and We'll just use that. That is the ball. Starting spot. Um, like I said, I was just gonna do a prefab, a empty game object for this, but I will create a prefab one more time. I'll just create uh, let's create this. Come on, where were you? Where were you? Undo. Right there. Um, I'm just going to take this and maybe put it about about right there right so I'm saying that I want the initial part the initial start of this row to start in that top right corner and I have my coordinates here I could use the coordinates themselves or I could use this and like I said I was just gonna make an empty out of it and take care of, I just take care of um, getting rid of the I got rid of the uh, collider and the render and so it's basically an empty game object at this point and I could just rename this to my start and post. And then that is what the start and post here is going to be. So I just drag that in, start post. Number of rows, I can say three. Um, number of objects per row would also be three. So I get three out of three. You know, let's do a little bit differently. Let's do um, four rows off three and then space in 1.5 so with that code and um, if we simply run the game you see here that it generates the three uh, three rows the four rows of three and um, you can see start and post the empty game object shows that this is where the first one would start and then the space in between them here how many per row three how many rows four so um yeah that's it you'll be able to customize this you can say well i wanted six rows off you know two 
then you want less space and you can do 1.2 and press play and there you go and it's also being placed inside the container so if if this is like a shop that you're trying to make you can see that you're able to scroll up and down and if you have certain scripts on these products uh, you'll be able to also create like a nice little store that you can generate now what i plan to do with this and like i said earlier you can leave a comment in the video if that's something you want to see because i plan to do it offline actually is i'm going to have my store populate through a json file off onto a server where i can uh, modify edit them and even um create like a link to the um, graphic that the um the uh, material will actually use and create different um different objects uh you know add price and all of that all offline so i can update that later but that's the end of the tutorial and just to give you an example of what i'm talking about is i'm actually going to remove these because this it's not actually part of my game um i do have a scene here if you haven't already clicked off the video i'm not going to say have a scene here and so um, it's a bowling game, a canopin bowling game, and you can find this kind of game in like New England. And so it's uh, it's going to be for mobile. That's why I have the layout kind of how it is. And it's just, uh, you know, this is the, the gameplay. So there's the, the main menu, which is the other scene, but it's just a gameplay scene. And so while you're here, uh, you have the little scoreboard that you can click on that pops up. You can also view the pins, you know, to check out how everything is laid out. And then there's the button here that will show the different balls that will be right here. And so what I've done there is actually the same thing. This is um, an image that is also on a canvas that is um, set to world space. So I have the 3D different bowling balls to pick from right in front right here. Nice little smooth animation that you just look to the right and then boom, there it is. I'll look back to the left so that's it guys thank you for watching i'll catch you in the next one